Hello everyone, this is Just a Dad. Today I'm going to do a detailed review on the Keurig K Elite. This thing's been out a couple years. This is kind of their higher end Keurig machines and it looks really nice. So some of the key features is it's got a really big reservoir. This has got a 75 ounce reservoir. That's pretty big for a Keurig machine. It says it's got a one minute brew time. That's really good and I've checked that. It's got a program, you can program it to come on in the morning. Now it doesn't do a brew for you. It just turns the machine on and gets the hot water ready to go. It's got a high altitude setting that you can program in your menu setting. And in the menu setting, you can also change the temperature of the brew coming out between, I think it's 187 and 192 degrees Fahrenheit. So it does have the strong brew. I'm gonna go over that. It just, it brews it at the same temperature. It just takes a little longer. It's got this hot water feature, which it can just shoot out hot water for like your uh, soups or something. And then it's got this iced function. That's if you're going to do it over ice. It still brews it pretty hot, but it's a little cooler. Then it's got five cup sizes. So four, six, eight, ten, and twelve. I don't know why they don't put ounces on there, but that's what they are. And it does come with a charcoal filter. So inside this reservoir... I don't have the filter in there right now, but there, you can put a charcoal filter in there so that it will filter your water before it goes through the, the Keurig machine. They say this really helps improve the taste. And the way you open this up, it's just got two tabs. you got to pinch these two tabs, and then it comes open. And then the new carbon filter is going to go right there. And then you just put, put that back on. And then to put the, the charcoal filter in, it goes right over the intake. And you got to kind of snap it on because you want it, otherwise it'll float. If you don't, it'll just kind of sit there and the water will go around it. But if you get it lined up, then it kind of snaps on and it's kind of held in place. So this, this machine has a really sharp look to it. It's very well built. It's got your standard Keurig part. I like that this comes out. That's a really nice metal handle. Again, all these are touch buttons. That's really nice. And then... Um, you got a drip tray comes out you can put your big travel mugs here it says it'll go up to seven 7.2 inches for a drip mug this is really nice that's really heavy duty metal just slides on there that's a dishwasher safe again around the back there's no cord storage that's your standard two foot cord and it does it is a three prong so the way you plug it in is just like that it's a pretty heavy duty cord so front to back, you're looking at about almost 12 inches. Left to right, it's about eight and a half, nine. And this thing's only about 12 inches tall, but with this, you need about maybe 17 inches with the handle. But it's kind of in the front. You know, it's six inches from the back. So the, wa the water reservoir has a, has a really nice lid. It just, it just pops off. And it does have kind of a carrying in order so you can fill the water reservoir up. Um, it is a big reservoir, so it gets pretty heavy with all that water. And it's got like a little track that it has to get into. But it's pretty easy to get into that track. I recommend just using a pitcher to fill it up. And there's the max line for the water. The control panel is very straightforward. But there are some, so inside in the controls, the menus, there are some different features I want to go over. And again, there's a strong selection, hot water. There's an add water light. So it lets you know, even though you'll have a little bit of water left, um, these things sense when the water is low enough that it can't brew your next cup of coffee. That comes on. It's got a descale light. I'm going to do another detailed video on how to descale this. So check out that video. I'm also going to do a video on how to use a reusable K-cup. Today, we're just going to be using normal K-cups. And again, here's all your different settings. So the menu looks really nice. And here's the power button. So you're just going to come up here and hit the power button. There's nothing on the back as long as it's plugged in. These don't do anything until you're inside the menu. This is the menu button. And I'm going to go over all the menu functions. Okay, so the first thing you're going to want to do is set the time. Now that moon up there doesn't have anything to do with the time. It, so this has a PM light. So just hit the this wheel button one time. Okay, make sure you add water. I guess you can't do anything until you add water. 
Well, I just learned something. So if your add water lights on, it doesn't let you do any of the menu functions. So again, just hit this button one time. Now that's a clock symbol. That's not a timer. So now you're just gonna set the time and it's only got a PM light. So if you want AM, make sure you, the PM's not showing. So right now it's one, it's one, and then press the button again and do minutes. It's 151 PM right now. And then just press it again and that's how you set the time. Now the next menu function, so after time, again, this is the time, that's the temperature. You can change this and it just cycles. It goes from 192 to 187. So anywhere in between, that's what temperature the water is gonna come out of the brew head. Now by the time it reaches your cup, it's about 10, 10 to 15 degrees cooler anyway. So I have mine set on the hottest setting, 192. The next one, now this is the off. Okay, so now let's look at the auto on feature. So the first time we press it, this is the clock button. So this is how you set time, temperature. Now this says off, but it's got a little um, sun. So what time do you want it to come on? So we gotta, we gotta activate this first. So once we press on, now when I press this again, it's gonna allow me to do a time. So I want this thing to come on at Oh, maybe about five, press it again, 5.30 in the morning. Now it's not gonna brew uh, a cup of coffee. It's just gonna turn the machine on and start heating the water up. Now, I don't find this that useful because this machine, when you turn it on in the morning, it, it takes, you know, two or three minutes to warm up from, from nothing. So that's not a big deal. So that's what that is. So again, there's clock, temperature, this is the the uh, auto on. We've got it on. Once you got it on, then you can program the time. And the way we have we know that set. So see this this sun icon that lets us know that we've got it programmed to come on at a certain time. Now what that time is, we got to go in the settings and find out. But that's what the sun icon means. Now the the moon icon. These are two kind of confusing, I think, because, you know, the moon, you might think, oh, this is um, at night or something, but the moon is just the auto off. So let's go into the settings again. So time, temperature, auto on, there's the time. Now the moon is auto off. I've got the, you can, you can set this to off if you never want the machine to turn off or on. Once I've got on selected, I go to the next you, it's between zero and two hours in 15 minute increments. So that's what this means. So the moon means it's just after it starts, after, like after you brew a pot of coffee, so after you turn it on, how long do you want this machine to stay on? The default is two hours, 120 minutes, 15 minutes, 30 minutes, you know, anywhere in there. So I leave it set for two hours and press that again. Now that's the mountain. So if you're in a really high altitude, you can turn that on, but we're not in a high mountain, so we're gonna leave that off. That adjusts some of the settings in, in here for high altitude brewing, so we're gonna leave that off. And then you're back to the beginning. So now on my display, I've got the sun. That means I've got it programmed to come on at a certain time, like five in the morning, and I've got the moon. That means it's programmed to shut off after two hours. Now we can turn both of those off. So let's go in here, there's time again, temperature. Let's turn the auto on to off. And see that got rid of the star. Now let's turn, let's have this machine stay on. As soon as I turn it on, it's gonna stay on forever. So let's go in, there's time, temperature, that's the auto on. Let's turn the auto off to off. Mountains off. See now, now both icons are off. So it's not gonna turn on at any certain time. It's only gonna turn on when I press the power button. And it's gonna stay on as long as I leave the power button on, I don't unplug it. So this thing will never turn off. It's always gonna keep that water hot. That's the settings inside this menu. I, I thought they could have been a little clearer, but once you get used to them, they are pretty easy. So this is like most Keurigs. So I've got the power button on, but say I can't do any brews. They want you to, they want you to activate it. So say you've already put your cake up in there and you, then you turn power on. You just gotta reopen the lid. And now everything's activated. Now I can select whatever I want.
So again, we'll talk about, we got four ounce, six ounce, eight ounce, 10 ounce, 12 ounce. 12 ounce is really big. Now the iced, the iced does a six ounce brew only. I'll show you that. Strong, you can do strong with any of these. The strong just makes it, it brews it almost twice as long. Not quite twice as long, but it's kind of a slower brew. Same temperature. Again, you, you'll hit strong and then you'll hit whatever size you want. And then hot water. So if I just want to come up here and do hot water, I'm going to hit that button and I can select whatever size hot water I want. So if you got a big soup, you're just going to come up here and hit the 12 ounces. It'll brew 12 ounces of hot water. Now you may want to do a rinse first because some, you know, anytime anybody does a coffee, you'll get a little bit of taste left over. Even though they remove their K-cup, you'll get a little bit of taste left over. So do a rinse first. So just do a like a six or a four ounce rinse through there just to get rid of the coffee flavor and then brew your hot water. Okay, so let's talk K-cups for a minute. This takes, this takes just a standard K-cup. Now these are all made by Keurig, but Walmart sells K-cups. You know, here's a donut shop K-cup. Um, this machine doesn't look for any barcode or anything. You can put any K-cup in here as long as it fits and it'll brew through it. Now, if you look on some of the, most, most boxes don't tell you what size should I brew this on. Now Keurig gives you a bunch of options. I think they give you those options just so you can choose what does it taste the best for you. Now again, this is four, six, and eight. I like my coffees on the 8. I've done a lot of taste testing with these K-Cups, like Folgers, and I taste tested out of a coffee maker, and it seemed like the 8 was the closest I could get. The, the 6 seemed a little strong, the 10 seemed a little weak, the 12 just way, way too weak. The 4 is pretty strong. Now, I consider this just a coffee maker, but you could technically, so that 4 ounce gets really close to doing an espresso shot. Um, I've got other Keurig machines. I've got this this Keurig K-Cafe. When it does a shot, it does two ounces through a K-Cup. That gives you like a true espresso shot. So four ounces is getting close. Um, and like I said, that's just going to run four ounces through this one K-Cup. That's a pretty bitter, concentrated coffee when you do just four ounces. And you could mix that with milk and iced and get you maybe an iced coffee. Okay, so I've got the machine turned on. We're going to lift this lever. We're just simply going to put it in here. I don't recommend piercing it. I don't recommend pushing this down. They say for high altitude, you should pierce it yourself, but we're just normal here and we're going to just push it down. Okay. So we're just going to take our K cup. We're going to open up the lever. It's got a needle down there. It's very sharp. And there's also a needle up above right there. You got to be really careful of those needles. And sometimes those needles can get clogged and I'll show you how to take that basket out and unclog them. So you're just going to put the cake up in there. Let the machine do the work. You don't have to press it down. They say if you're in high altitude, you should press it down. But I'm not in high altitude, so I'm just going to so let it sit there. Pull the handle. And the machine pierces the top and the bottom. It's going to inject that hot water in there and come out the bottom. Okay. Then I'm going to select. It activates it. All the lights are flashing. I've got plenty of water in the reservoir. I'm going to do my 8 ounce brew. So I'm just going to come up here and press the 8 ounce. And in less than a minute, you've got a coffee. It's not super loud when it brews. Again, that's about 175. I've got that temperature cranked up to 192. So by the time it gets to your coffee cup, you're about 170. That's a really hot cup of coffee. Now the only noise you do get out of the machine, so we this has a reservoir inside it. And when we brewed our cup of coffee, it emptied that reservoir. And now it's filling it back up and heating that water back up. So you're hearing it boiling water inside. That's about the loudest the machine gets. But once it gets it boiled, it keeps it at that temperature, and then it quiet. And it, then it's really quiet. So let's check this cup of coffee. They do recommend stirring these first because it kind of gets weak at the top. Yeah, 
that's a really good cup of coffee. These Keurig machines have come a long way. I just like the possibilities now are so endless um, with K-Cups. You can get whatever you want. Um, and that's they just make a really hot cup of coffee. Okay, so to, to get the K-Cup out, you're just going to lift the handle. It exposes the K-Cup. Be careful, these can be kind of hot. And if you've never seen the inside of a K-Cup, I'm going to cut one open. I'm going to cut the bottom open first. So I've also got another video on how to recycle K-Cups. Check out that video. But there's the bottom. It's got a really nice coffee filter. And that prevents sediment in your coffee. And I'll show you that when you use reusable K-Cups. If you don't, reusable K-Cups offer a filter too. So make sure you use it. If you don't, you'll get sediment. Okay, so I've got the top cut off. There's two tablespoons of coffee in these K-Cups. And like I said, there's a filter. Really nice filter. These things are very intricate. And it does a really good job with the coffee grounds. Okay, so that was a normal cup of coffee, which is what probably most people are going to do. But let's do the strong. So let's put another K-cup in here. Over the lid. We're going to press the strong button first. And again, I can select any size. I can even do iced. With, that's only six ounces. So I'm going to do strong and that. And I'm going to show you. It takes about, about 30 seconds longer. So this first brew took 42 seconds. This one with the strong is going to take about a minute and 20. So here it's coming out. It comes out at the same temperature. It just takes longer. It sounds like the pump is running like slower. So the water just kind of comes out slower. But you end up with the same temperature around 170. So there you have the same cup of coffee on the strong brew setting. It just takes about 30 seconds longer, which is not bad. These are really quick machines. There's that water tank heating back up again. Now I've done taste tests. It's kind of hard for me to tell. I'm not an expert on coffee. I really can't tell the, the strong. Um, when it's on the strong setting, I really just can't tell. It kind of tastes the same. So here I've got a travel mug. So say you want the travel mug, you want to remove the drip tray. And now my travel mug fits underneath there. And that travel mug's about seven inches. And I got about seven, maybe seven and a quarter inches I could put underneath there. Okay, so now let's do an iced coffee. They say fill your cup all the way up with ice because it really melts down when you when it does the iced. So we lift it up. We're gonna put our K-cup in. The ice light is flashing. All we got to do is press the ice light. We don't have to press anything else. And again, this is only six ounces. So they've got it kind of close to this switch because this is four, six. So this one's six in a coffee. So this one is six in an ice. That's a good way to remember. So we just press that button and it immediately starts to brew the coffee. Now I did, I did check this temperature. It is about 10 degrees cooler when you've got it on the ice setting, but that's still 165 degrees. Now Keurig doesn't recommend um, putting ice in a glass cup and then brewing the hot coffee into it. I haven't had a problem, but they have that in their instructions not to do that. And again, this doesn't take very long at all. So you could add a little milk to that. Now this isn't, you could add some syrups to that. That's still gonna be really bitter. But it is pretty, it's a, it's a pretty cold drink, but the farther you go down, it gets a little warmer, but you can see that ice goes away really quick because even though it's it has the iced function, it's still brewing it at a pretty hot temperature. Okay, so now let's do the hot water setting. I took my K-cup out. Make sure you don't have a K-cup in there when you do the hot water. Now I can press the hot water button. And again, it, it take, you, the ice light's not lit, but I can do any size of hot water. So I want to do, let's do that one, a 10. 
and I, I purposely didn't do a rinse, so I just did a cup of coffee because I want to I want you to see that you do the water is just a little uh, stained from the coffee, so you definitely want to do a rinse. But the hot water comes out of there pretty hot. Yeah, about 175, 172. That's a, that'll really burn you, so be really careful with that water. Okay, so there you've got a hot water that you could brew into a, a cup or a bowl for your soups or, or hot chocolate even. Okay, so I took a sip of this and kind of smelled it. You can, that coffee taste kind of lingers in there a little bit. So again, you could just throw that out and do another hot water and that would be a pretty clean, but Keurig does sell these rinse pods just for this, so in between flavored drinks. Um, these are kind of expensive, but they really do a good job, and I do recommend actually using these once in a while, just to kind of clean your needles. I was, I was amazed. I thought I was keeping my machine pretty clean by doing hot water rinses all the time, and then I put one of these rinse pods in there, and man, you should have seen the junk that came out of there, so I do recommend those. They are just kind of expensive. So with these K-Cups, you can do teas. They sell a tea, and that's kind of what I think the bigger settings are for. I do my teas on 12 ounces because those teas are just really strong and they taste really good. There's hot chocolate, there's espresso cups, there's cappuccino cups. They're kind of all in one. It's kind of like a powder, and when it mixes with the hot water, you do get the kind of coffee and milk taste, but it's not the same as kind of a milk frother and all that. So that pretty much does it for this video. Like I said, I'm going to do another video on how to do how to use a reusable K-cup with this machine, and you can use your own coffee grounds. And I'm also going to do another video on how to descale. You have to keep up on descaling on a Keurig. That's the one thing. But I'm going to do two videos. This is twenty dollars for this solution. I'm also going to do vinegar. So they do allow you to do vinegar. It just takes a little longer. So this is a really solid machine. Um, nothing too fancy about it. You know the needles. If you ever have to get that this basket, just pinch the sides and push from the bottom. I've found if you stick your hand in that little hole in the bottom and push up from the bottom, there's no needles that are going to get you in the bottom. The only needle is down in the cup. So if that needle ever clogs, which it does once in a while, you got to take this, this basket out and then it just comes apart right here at this seam. And I just kind of grab it and just kind of twist or kind of like break it and it comes apart. You also want to kind of clean this once in a while. I found that this gets quite a bit of gunk in it. But if it ever clogs, stick a paper clip up that hole and it'll come out the top. That unclogs it. And then when you want to put it back together, there's these little holes. And there's these little um, things here that go on. And it'll, it kind of snaps into place. And then you can't turn it anymore. And then when you want to put it in, so there's this tab and then there's two tabs so make sure you can read caution sharp needles that goes on the bottom and it just snaps in very easy now the top needle can be a little tricky you cannot take it out if it ever clogs you just kind of kind of stick um, you got to kind of stick some like a paper clip up there and hopefully get it unjammed that rinsing pod might help so this machine right now is selling for $130 on Amazon. That's a pretty good price for this machine. Um, I found this on Facebook Marketplace for $60. So they're going around between $50 and $70 on Facebook Marketplace. Again, make sure it reaches the proper temperature. I've got a whole video on how to buy a used Keurig machine. But this just looks really nice. Thanks everybody for your support. I hope you liked this video. If you got any questions on this machine, I check my comments on a daily basis. Please leave them below. And thanks everybody for watching. If you could, please like and subscribe.